introduce myself. My name is Jennifer Hill, and I work for Youth Advocate Programs um, as the Field Support Coordinator for Northeastern Pennsylvania. And um, I've worked with um, supporting people for the last, well, I don't want to tell you how long. Let's just say 10 years. Um, and Larissa is an individual that we I have supported for quite a while. And when she turned 21, we had, we'd like talked about her transition plan. And um, at, she had always kind of just wanted to stay at home and live with her mom. At 21, she decided, I want to live independently. We're like, this is awesome. This is so great. And so we, we began to talk about what does that look like? What does that mean for her? And um, out of supporting Larissa, the Lifeline Binder was born. So as we look at the Lifeline Binder, it's, this is really all about her. So I didn't develop a PowerPoint because I really want you to understand the concepts and the information and not just take this as like a template to do it her way, but really to be able to do it your way. Um, I, can, I will give you all of the information that we've put in there, but the really important parts to this is, this is really Larissa's life. It's Larissa's entire life encapsulated in a binder. And it has evolved, it has grown, um, we've put things into it, we've taken things out of it, um, we've, we've reworded things, um, the language has morphed and changed, it really is called a lifeline binder because that's what Larissa wanted to call it. So you might do your own binder and you might call it something different. So um, let's talk about the foundations of where we actually started with the lifeline binder. Um, I would prefer this to be interactive. I don't want, really want to just stand up here and talk. So um, what are, if you're looking at developing something to support an individual from transitioning, what would you include um, into your lifeline binder? What would, you, what would be one of your first things to look at? Anybody? Goals. What was that? Goals. Goals, excellent, okay. That is included, um, and we did talk about that, yes? Medical information. Medical information that is in there, that's great. <laughs> Modes of communication. Modes of communication, good. Transportation. And interests. Interests, excellent. So we started at a much more basic level. Um, we started, and this isn't really any particular order, it's really what worked for her. So we started with um, the document from Pennsylvania, Transitioning to Adulthood in Pennsylvania, um, that's put out, and we used Everyday Lives Matters. Um, because we wanted to make sure that as we went through this, we were focused, we were intentional, we weren't wasting time tracing rabbit trails. Um, so truthfully, those documents, Larissa actually wanted to be in here. So the Everyday Lives Matters documentation, it's in here. So now you're gonna have to forgive me. Larissa's much better at navigating this binder than I am. She practices it, she uses it, it's her life. I'm not great as, um, as good as her as navigating it, so um, I might not find everything as quick as her. But um, you will see, like her transitioning to adulthood in Pennsylvania, it's in here. Why? Because that's what's important to her, and that's what she wants in here. Her ISP is in here. Um, why? So she can look at it, so she can access it, so she knows what she wants. Um, one of the things that we've done with Larissa is we've used the Casey Life Skills Assessment um, the important thing with the Casey Life Skills Assessment is L Larissa struggles to read um, some of the larger words, major words. She struggles to understand some things. But what we've done is we've taken the Life Skills Assessment and we've, we've given it to her every six months so that what she knows is that she wants, in her words, the orange to go bye-bye and she wants to see the blue. And what this does is it gives us very, very specific and very, very detailed um, goals and activities and things that we need to teach her. So if, if you're not familiar with the Casey Life Skills Assessment, there's questions in here like, um, I'm part of a family and we care about each other. Okay, so she can answer yes, no, mostly yes, I'm confident in that. Okay, if, if she doesn't answer that, 
in the way, like if she answers no, then okay, we need to do some family work. We need to make sure that she has some really strong, confident relationships with her family. Um, I have my, my living spaces clean. If that's a no, okay, let's work on it. Um, I know how to fill out a resume. I know how to turn down a sexual advance. I know how to balance a budget. I know what it means to lease an apartment. So there's very, very, very specific questions in here that are very detailed. And we can go through on a very systematic basis and say, OK, you know what? In her words, we want the orange to go bye-bye. We want to see more blue. Let's figure that out. Let's work together. Um, we've also really focused in on, truthfully, Maslow's hierarchy of needs. What does that look like to um, meet her basic needs? What are those basic needs for her? How do we meet them and how do we incorporate them into the binder? So this, the order of this binder is what Larissa wants, what Larissa has requested, um, and what works for her. So her very beginning of her binder is friends and family. She has chosen who she wants to have listed in her binder. Um, as we were looking through her life and through her connections and through her attachments, she has like some hangups with her family. Um, and so we're respecting Larissa and there's a name under my business card that she wants in there, but she doesn't want other people to know. So we've respected that. We have made accommodations, say, okay, you don't want your mom to know that that name's in there. Your mom's not gonna question picking up my business card. But this is Larissa's binder, and it's what works for Larissa. And to be honest with you, it's her dad's name, and it's her dad's phone number. And she wants to have a relationship with her dad, and her mom just does, it's not something her mom encourages. Um, but it's because Larissa wants that, we're gonna put that in here. Um, there's some other people that Larissa wanted to have a part of her safety plan, and it's people that worked with her in the past. And so we, Larissa was like, nope, I really want those people. So as a team, we, we prepared her for those conversations. We helped her to understand what that would look like, what that would mean. So she contacted those people and said, this is what I'm doing. I'm trying to work towards independence. I'm trying to set these goals. Can I put your name and phone number in my lifeline binder in case I ever have a problem? They're like, absolutely, not a problem. So then she did that with another person. She went and called them up. We prepared her, we walked her through it. She called them and said, would you be a part of my lifeline binder process? If I'm ever out in the community, if I ever need help, could we put your name and number in there? Absolutely. Um, so what we have done is we have, it's like an evolving book. It just continues to grow and we add things, we take things out based on um, what Larissa wants. I'm gonna just take out this cover sheet. So the book actually started in a smaller binder um, with a different cover sheet. But again, because it's her life and what she wants, it's growing. So I actually love the fact that this cover is written on because it shows that she had one thing that she really wanted and as she has used it and she has, um, she has grown, she has changed things. So section one was family and friends. Section two, she initially had health and wellness. So then she got to the point where when she saw the words health and wellness, she didn't think doctors and medication. She wasn't able to read the words health and wellness. So she crossed it off and she wrote doctors and meds. So for me, I feel like that's absolutely perfect because it, it doesn't really matter if it makes sense to me what really matters is this, does it make sense to her? Um, so we've gone through supports and services. Um, you can see down here, she has employment. Well, employment didn't make any sense to her. The word was too large, she couldn't read it, it was too tricky. Even though she knows what it means when it's said, she said, I want that to be jobs and volunteering. Um, and so she does volunteer, so that information is in there. And she's like, well, I don't really like where it's placed. Let's move it around. We're like, perfect. Because the truth is, is Larissa can navigate this like a dream. Because it's her life, her information, her documentation. 
The other thing that's happened through this whole lifeline binder process with Larissa is her increase of independence. So when we started, um, we were basically just gathering information. So we'd sit down with Larissa and we'd say, okay, we're on section two. We need to talk about doctors, health and wellness. Okay, Larissa, what doctors do you see? So she gave us the name of her primary care physician. Perfect, cool. So we wrote it down. So then she's like, do you see any other doctors? She said, oh yeah, I have seizures. We knew that, but we're, we're empowering her to identify. So she's, we're like, okay, great. What, what seizure doctor do you see? We put it down. Um, her dentist, we put it down. Um, what actually happened through this process is Larissa learned to self-advocate because her mom held her information so tight, her mom didn't really want her to have all of it. And so she would go and say, mom, I'm doing this binder project. Um, can I please have the name or the, the phone number and the address for Dr. Brown? So then she'd come with her little piece of paper, she'd sit at the computer and we'd type it out together and it would go in the binder. And then she said, oh, my, ne my neurologist changed. I don't see the same neurologist, I see a different neuro neurologist. She'd come with her paper, she'd sit down, she would type it out, it'd be the format that she wanted. So it's not that she's now just gathering the information, she is actually typing the information herself with support so that it looks exactly the way that she wants. Again, because I don't want it to look the way that I want it to look. I don't, Emily, who supports her, we don't want it to look the way that Emily wants it to look. It's really all about Larissa. Um, what's actually even come out of that is Larissa makes her own doctor's appointments now. Larissa will call, she's gotten herself in trouble, but she has called on her own and said, I need a dentist appointment. She, she'll, she'll get out her calendar from the back of the binder. She'll, she'll get it right out in front of her and she'll call the doctor and say, I need a dentist appointment. I need a doctor's appointment. And so you can see the process of this binder just increases her independence because she's gaining confidence because she sees it grow and she sees it develop and she sees the benefits of using it in a daily way. Go ahead. Sure. So there, there are, and I'm going to be going through these as we go throughout. Um, so I'll show you some of the different sections. There's family and friends. Now, again, this is really Larissa. So if I were supporting, let me just interject here. Actually, my coworker that's been helping Larissa develop this has had like this moment. She's like, this is so great. I'm actually going to do this with my own child. So I'll go through these. But what Emily has actually started doing with her own daughter, um, Sarah is a junior in high school. She's going into her senior year. Sarah was born premature and has pretty significant medical complications. She's also very involved in the community. So what Emily has done for Sarah is she's taken all of her medical history, she has taken all of her medical doctors because of where we live. Um, medical care is spread out between states. Um, there's times we have to go to um, Syracuse. There's times we go to um, New York City. There's times we go to Philadelphia. It just really depends on the specialty. So, but if, if Sarah was going to college, she's not going to know like, oh, like what doctor is where? And so Emily has systematically be, begun to compile all of this information in a binder for her daughter. So, I guess my point in saying that is, it's really not just limited to one scope. You can really do a lot of things. In Sarah's binder, um, she began to put all of her academic achievements in there. So all of her 4-H stuff, all of her, um, she's part of the Pennsylvania leadership team for youth leadership. All of those things have been in there. So really, the possibilities are virtually endless. On Larissa's For This Moment, is um, supports and services. So that would be all of her agencies that provide her supports. Um, money and finances. Um, as we were going through the money and finances, Larissa, her mother declined her access to a bank account. And so we actually took Larissa around because just because her mom didn't want her to have, have access didn't mean that we didn't want her to have the skills. So we took her to all of the local banks um, because she needed to still learn the skills 
And in the process, she discovered that she actually wanted to have a bank account. Um, so we, we went back, talked to mom, like, hey, would you be supportive of this? Mom did agree. And what actually is happening is, is as time goes by, mom ex like relinquishes some of the reins just a little bit further and a little bit further and a little bit further. And it's not without this heartache because as you can imagine as a parent, like you want to protect your children. And she's like, I just want to grow. And mom's like, I just really want to protect you. And so there's like this back and forth of what is best for Larissa. Larissa learning to self-advocate and say, this is what I want for my life. This is my life. And mom saying, okay, I'm going to protect you. I really want this for me. I really want this for you. So in the money, Larissa was able to set up an account. And you're going to see that in the video. Um, she's able to navigate the bank independently. Um, so her deposit slips are in there. Um, let me just go to that section really quick and I can show you some of the things that are in there. Um, she has blank checks so that she could learn to write out checks um, because as you all know coming to this conference, checks are still needed, right? There are places where checks are still only allowed and so um, the bank gave us a whole bunch of blank checks. We were able to photocopy them and just practice. Um, she keeps her receipts in here so that she can manage her money. Her, her deposit slips and her withdrawal slips are all in this section. Um, right now, her mother doesn't really want her to have a full-time job. So when we go to the occupation section or the job section, you're going to see she does volunteering. So um, her information on the places where she volunteers is in that section. Um, goals for independence, she has very, very clear goals. She sat us down as a treatment team and said, now don't tell my mom, but I want to be independent living by the time I'm 25. We're like, perfect, let's figure this out. We've got four years. Yes, go ahead. She is 23 right now. She will be 24 in November. Um, so her goals, and we're, we're not just talking like goals, she, wants to belong to a church. So right now her mom has said no, but that's one of her goals is she wants to go to a church. She really wants to be socially connected. Her mom discourages that, So, but that's in her goal section. And so what's also in there is, okay, she can walk to this location from her house and interact with these people from her community that she chooses. And that's a realistic goal because she can walk there. Um, go ahead. This is a little different because you can speak to how are you engaging mom as you're supporting uh, Larissa? Absolutely. Turning mom off and, you know, and Truth be told, it's all about a relationship. So I have a relationship with mom where I can say the hard things. I can't say the hard things all at once, but I can say the hard things every once in a while. So um, probably six months ago, I said, all right, mom, we need to really have a conversation about like, what's going to happen if you die? Mom didn't return my call. She was very passive aggressive. She was super angry with me. She said, I don't have time. And then Every time I called the schedule, she purposefully and intentionally gave me times where she knew I wasn't available based on my scheduling. And so I said, no stress. Like, I'm not going to push her beyond something that she's comfortable with. So um, I let time go by. I let things lie down. I went back and I said, hey, like, you want to just like get together? We can do lunch my treat, we can do whatever. She goes, you know what, why don't you just come to the house? And I said, sure. So I sat her down and I said, you know what, can I just share something with you that's been really bothering me? Um, I'm just really concerned about like, if you're in a car accident, what's gonna happen to her? Because right now she's living in your house. And so through that, I was able to bridge and have that conversation with her. And she was very open. And to be honest with you, I learned a whole lot of other information that I'm not sure that Larissa understands, but now we as a treatment team need to be mindful of. So it's really knowing your, your individual and really building on that relationship to get them to where you need to go, and it's not immediate. Go ahead. Is mom a power of attorney or is she a guardian? She is neither, but mom, 
gets child support for Larissa. So mom and dad were split up when Larissa was 12 months old. And so um, when dad always paid child support, so when Larissa turned 18, mom petitioned the courts for child support. And so in the state of Pennsylvania, if your child has a disability and the parents split up, apparently child support can continue indefinitely. And so um, it's been a little bit trickier to navigate just based on, because if Larissa goes independent living, mom doesn't get child support. Right. So this is that's a really great point, but what we've really had to struggle with as a treatment team is this. I'm not against, I'm sorry, but I'm not against mom. I mean, I know that right, no. System right, no. So do we here, here's it's an ethical question. Do you empower Larissa to rebel against her family system to go independently where she has only community supports who love, value and appreciate her, which you're going to see on the video? Or do you bring them along together and it's a much slower process? Do you want them to be an intact family with mutual love and respect for each other? And I feel like, to be honest with you, it's such a call. It's not my call to make. I don't have to live. Right. It is Larissa's. And so Larissa has to be educated and she has to understand. And so she's now beginning to understand. And um, it just came up last week. And it got in the binder really quick. Larissa, under, like she now understands, she doesn't have a really high social and emotional intelligence. And so it's gone in the binder. So now she knows she really needs to work on her assertiveness skills. She needs to learn to work on her communication skills. She needs to learn to work on her emotional intelligence. And she needs to really know how to properly advocate for herself in a way where there's mutual respect. Because right now, there might be respect, but Larissa cowers in fear and rejection rather than being able to say, hey, let's just talk about this. Let's work this out. This is what I think. This is what I feel. Does that make sense? And so it's, it's, I feel like it's actually the easy answer to say, well, let's just teach her to be independent. Let's just teach her to, you're going to see in the video that people love her. And they're people that don't have to. They're community workers. Um, and it's easy to say, well, you know what? But it's not my family. And family really is a value and importance. And it's really a decision that Larissa needs to make. So I'm glad you brought that up. Any other questions? Go ahead. Um, is mom usually involved in the, the treatment plan meetings or the treatment team meetings? She is always involved in treatment team meetings. Um, at the request of Larissa, there's some things that we choose to not say. Because it's Larissa's life. So if she says, please don't let her. Please don't let my mom know that my dad's name is in here. You know what? I'm going to respect Larissa. I'm going to respect her boundaries. So, um, and no, as you hear the fi family dynamics, you're kind of going to understand as we go through this why some of the things are the way that they are. Why, why is dad's name covered? Well, now it's pretty clear, right? Um, so going back to this, some other things on here. Housing. Um, Larissa wanted to go. Oh, go ahead. Whether. So, at this point, does, does the dad still pay child support? So, <laughs> so, the question is at this point in time, does dad still pay child support? Um, so, the last month and a half has been pretty crazy because dad filed that he is under um, financial hardship and does not have the financial means to be able to pay child support. So it went back to court. Um, what happened in the process is Larissa got torn apart. Because why what's happening is all of mom, the brothers and their sisters, are all talking negatively about dad. And all Larissa wants is to have the love of her dad. Mm -hmm. And so it's always an excuse why dad can't be involved. And it's really hard to know as an outsider what is true and what's not true. It's hard to know, is he really so busy that he's not involved? Is, is it that mom just blocks it so that he can't be involved? There are times where he is. It's just very, very limited. Um, 
Larissa loves her dad. And so that's what we know. Um, we encouraged Larissa based on what she said to us to have a voice. And what she wanted was, I don't want to have to go to court and testify against my dad. So then we gave her the words to say, mom, I'm not comfortable. Mom, that hurts my heart. Mom, that makes me sad. Whatever it is that Larissa wanted to communicate, we kind of built her up to be able to say that, and her, her mom did not make her go to court. So um, it shows that her mom is willing to work and is willing to listen, and so all of that is positive. Um, <clears throat> so housing. So Larissa has gone to, uh, initially Larissa thought, like, how am I going to live? Like, I have to have my mom. Um, and so um, just through some of the connections that I have, I said, there is public housing where you can go and you can ask. It's, it's generally for the elderly. That's generally who lives there. But they do have slots for individuals with disabilities. Um, would you like to look at it? Like, this is an option. This is where it's located. And so over time, um, she was able to get the, to the place where she was like, oh, okay. Because what she does is she actually volunteers at a different building for cleaning. And it's, again, something that she wants to do. And so she understands it's not the same building, but it's similar. And um, she goes there, she cleans, she interacts with some of the residents. Um, it's 100% independent living, um, but it is community living. And like there's, there's apartments, and then there's like a, um, like a community room and the sun room and their mailboxes are all right in there. But um, she said, can I have a application? We're like, absolutely. She's like, please don't tell my mom. N no stress, we won't tell your mom. It's her business. Um, so appointment and volunteering, entertainment. Um, there's not a lot in there because she just, in our area, I'm telling you, I live in a county, our entire county has Mm, this is a stretch. We might have three stoplights. We have for sure two McDonald's, Susquehanna County. I for sure have one Burger King. We now have two Dunkin' Donuts. Um, if we want to go to Walmart, Target, it's one way or the other, Scranton or Binghamton. Um, there is no industry. Um, out of our top 10 um, employers, I believe nine of them are government-based. There is one non-government-based, funding-based, which is Elk Mountain Ski Resort, which is seasonal. So um, employment's not in abundance. Um, stores are not in abundance. People are not in abundance. <laughs> gas industry, if you want gas, that's where to go. Anyhow, um, so entertainment, there's really not a lot. I think we have one movie theater, and it's not anywhere near where she lives. Um, safety and security. Um, and so it's interesting because some of the th things we've been doing with her is um, exactly what we talked about in the, um, another presenter talked yesterday in the, um, with the police officer, and we've actually started that with Larissa. Um, and so that's kind of in her safety section is we didn't ever want her to, if, if Larissa comes up to any one of you, she won't talk to you. She um, is like, we call it a superpower um, because she can be mute for hours. Um, and she will look at you and you will not be able to read her face because she will have a flat affect. Um, so we were really concerned like, okay, if an, like, if, um, an ambulance needs to come, there's gonna be a problem. If a state trooper needs to come, there's gonna be a problem. If a police officer needs to come, there's gonna be a problem. So we began, that's all in the safety section. So one, we identified addresses. Those addresses are in here. We identified um, phone numbers. So those phone numbers are in here. Um, we began to identify safe people. So, so this is for our area. I'm gonna assume that it's for all of the state of Pennsylvania. Um, but the state police barracks have um, a resource officer on hand. So it might be like one resource, er um, resource officer for multiple regions. So our resource officer is located in the Dunmore barracks, but they are willing to come up 
and meet individually with individuals that need support, whether they're on the spectrum or whether they have a, um, a difference or a challenge. They will meet one-on-one, -on -one, they will meet in a group, and they will support through a desensitization process so that um, if there's ever an, an issue, they can know what to expect. So all of that information is in here. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, We've also identified safe people for Larissa, so that's in here. Um, um, shopping, holidays, and birthdays, that's in here. So Larissa's passion, her desire, her love is another thing that was super, super important to put in this binder. Um, her love is cards. She loves to send cards. She loves to receive cards. Um, so she volunteered at a daycare two years ago. She still sends and receives cards to people from that daycare, and that daycare no longer exists. Um, but it's such, it's such a passion of her. She's so sweet and so genuine and so loving. Uh, it has to go in the binder. Like, that's important to her. Birthdays are incredibly important to her. I don't know how she found out my birthday. It's on her calendar. Anybody that works with her, from her service coordinator, to she has seven nieces and nephews. They're everybody's birthday. Everybody that's ever worked with her, their birthday is on her calendar. Why? Because it's important to her. Um, I don't know how she figures it out, but she's pretty, pretty good with stuff like that. So that's in here. Um, the other thing that's in here is um, what her mother says. I will just tell you what her mother says. Um, her mother does not have the ability to drive her to and from a place. Um, we've actually worked with people on transportation. I'm actually just getting there. Um, again, we live in a very, very rural. We do not have Uber. We do not have Lyft. Um, we don't have that. We have trees. I mean, we actually have potholes that will suck in a car. So that's our gift to our area. So. I, I was just in um, a third world country, and no joke, I looked at the person sitting next to me, it may have been my son, and I said, how come their roads are better than our roads? This is the craziest thing to me. We are in a third world country. We are not hitting potholes. It's crazy. Anyhow, so transportation. Um, and this transportation brings me to a whole new um, um, thing that we've really worked on with Larissa. Um, we have set up public transportation for her. It's called Susquehanna County Transportation. I don't even know what it all is called. But to be honest with you, it really doesn't matter what it's called. Larissa can't read it anyhow. The words are too big, they're too complicated. But what the team has done is they've taught her to identify the logo. So it doesn't really matter that Larissa can't read Susquehanna Wyoming County Transportation. She has the logo memorized. So when she sees it on a vehicle, she knows. She knows what the rules and the regulations are. We've, we've taught her about what it costs for things. So to go from her house to the grocery store, which is about a mile, is $9 one way. So for her, transportation isn't really going to work. Um, but the paperwork, to be honest with you, is filled out. It's in here. Larissa did get herself in trouble again, which I'm going to be proud of her for because she was self-advocating. Um, there's paperwork that says that um, if Larissa needs a rider on with her to keep her safe and to help her navigate, she can have that, but it has to be signed by a medical professional. So Larissa actually took the paper herself and went to the doctor herself and got her doctor to sign it without her mom's permission. So it was a little bit of a, but then I'm like, great job, Lars, I'm really proud of you. <laughs> Sorry, mom. Let's talk about that. Go ahead. She does. Yep. She does. She has um, behavior support. She has um, community hab and she has um, companion. Yes. So um, she, she's had other options, but she just is not interested. Um, she knows what she wants, and she, um, as much as she is a very quiet and meek individual, she knows what she wants, and she doesn't want people to tell her to do something that she doesn't want to do. 
So um, again, a really important thing is, is you don't have to teach a person to read all of the language. Um, the other thing that's really important about this binder is um, Larissa has been diagnosed with epilepsy. It's been quite a long time since she has had a seizure. Um, it's, it's in here in case she's ever out in public. Um, it's green so that Larissa can easily find it. But the other thing is Larissa knows that this is her epilepsy paperwork because it has a heart in the middle. So she can't read the word epilepsy, um, but she knows what she's looking for. And if we say, hey, Larissa, could you show anybody? She can go immediately there to find it because she knows what she's looking for. So again, this is really Larissa's, this is Larissa's binder. Before we go too much further, it's really important to understand that this didn't just happen overnight. I mean, this binder represents hours and hours and hours of work, um, both on Larissa's part and on her support staff of just investing. Um, because it's a really delicate balance because if you push the binder, let's do the binder, let's do the binder, then, what then her entire life becomes the binder and she's just consumed with it. We want the binder to be an asset and to help build her and empower her and encourage her not to be all consuming so that every time she gets together, it's like, oh, I gotta work on my binder again. No, it's a joy for her, it's a, it's a blessing and it's a gift. Go ahead. Does she take the binder with her everywhere? Good question. So the question was, does she take this binder with her everywhere she goes? She takes this binder everywhere she goes when she's receiving services. She does not want her mom to have access to the binder because she feels like her mom won't respect it. Her mom will downplay it. And that there's things in here that she doesn't want her mom to know. She doesn't want her mom to know that she really wants to live in an apartment on her own. Why does she want to live in an apartment on her own? Because that's what people do. Her sister was able to do that. If her sister was able to do that, she wants to be able to do that. So um, her mom does. Um, I asked for permission before we started it. I sat down with mom. That's a good question. I, um, I sat down with mom and I said, hey, I, like I have this idea. What are your thoughts? Um, is, do you have any reservations? And she's like, oh no, go ahead and do it. Doesn't matter. So um, mom's fine with it. Do, do I think that mom knows the extent of the binder? Probably not. Does, do I think that mom knows the value and the importance? No, I don't think she does. But to be, to be honest with you though, I'm gonna continue to work on mom. I'm not like gonna cut ties and be like, all right, let's go. I'm gonna actually talk to mom and say, I'm gonna continue to try to bring it in. Hey, um, I actually talked to mom about using this binder in this presentation because although I feel like it's Larissa's choice, um, Larissa's heart is to teach other people Larissa's heart is to share with other people. Um, she's just got that special spirit. But I felt like it's also respectful to talk to mom. And so I did talk to mom. And mom's like, oh, whatever, cool, do whatever you want. <laughs> so go ahead. So, um, no, we've talked about it. Well, a lot of the documents, a lot of the documents that are in there, have, well, they're interchangeable, but they've been generated on the computer, so they're in there by default because, like, her friends and family page has been done on the computer. Um, it was typed up. Her medical page has been done on the computer. So, is it organized in a computer? No, um, but. We're, we will probably head that way. The problem is, is it's, it's so still evolving. Like literally, we just added the information about the social emotional last week. And so I think it would double the workload and would be overwhelming. And for Larissa, um, computer is her fun. Like she really just likes to watch YouTube videos and watch country music video songs. And so I think to add another component right now would be too much for her. Um, so that was a good question. At some point in time, we will, and we will figure out what works for her. Um, I actually feel like a tablet would be a better option. You know, like, let's put it on an iPad. Let's swipe through some pages. We're just not there yet. So this can, yes. Well, this is like the sacred 
and Larissa knows. She, like, it was actually really hard for her to give it to me because it's like, it's her life. And so she's like, don't let it get bent. Don't lose it. Don't drop it. And I'm like, right, I know. I'm really. So to be honest with you, this isn't like a mock-up. This isn't like a fake. This is the real deal. And this is so treasured. It is like, I really do believe she probably is a little nervous that I have it. Um, but it is kept in a safe place. Um, it just doesn't go home with her. So whoever's question that was. Um, so um, lastly, did I go through all these? I did. Oh, transportation. So, go ahead. It doesn't stay with me. It stays with her support staff. So the one who, so, so I'm the one that came up with the idea. I'm the one who kind of like, hey, this is where we're going. We, we talk a lot about trajectory. So okay, if, if this is where you want to go, what are we going to do to get there? Like if you don't have a goal, if you don't have trajectory. So that's kind of my role in my position. So the person that actually does the day-to-day -day work with her keeps the binder. But it really is wherever Larissa wants it to be. Um, if Larissa wants it to be locked up in a safe, we'll figure it out. If Larissa wants a binder or a, a briefcase for it to be locked up in, we'll figure it out. Um, because it's really not about where it's safe for us, it's where it's safe for her. Well, is she ever left alone at home? And if she is, how can she access like, emergency? So actually, that's a good question. And so Larissa is left home alone. Um, and actually, it was really great, great not great. Um, while she was home alone, um, the toaster spontane spontaneously caught on fire. Um, and she called somebody, somebody came quick. It ended up being not an incident. But what, like it wasn't, it was just like a spark. For her, it was like engulfed. Um, but it, what, there was like no black, no nothing. But what we discovered is, oh, that needs to go in the binder. Like we need to begin to figure out those like outside of the box safety issues. Um, but because Larissa's family structure, um, her mom lives there, her sister and her boyfriend live there mostly. Um, they're in and out. She has two brothers. Um, her grandmother is there often. Her uncle lives a couple of blocks away. Her great great grandmother lives a couple of blocks this way. Um, her mom has worked intentionally on building relationships with the neighbors. So if there's ever an issue, like the neighbor across the street knows to support Larissa, there's a neighbor that's like two houses down that has a child with special needs. Um, and so he, that mother will just be mindful of Larissa. Um, but what it does is it, those everyday life happenings, because then I thought, well, what if she had a grease fire? She would never know how to handle a grease fire. Um, and so it makes us think of what else we need to put in the binder. Um, and how do we make it accessible to her? How does she make it accessible to her when she needs to know it? And a lot of times what happens for her is just being able to identify it. OK, so you like a spark came out of your toaster. <clears throat> to be honest with you, for the most part, she's going to remember most of what to do the next time. Um, so, although we will put some things in there. Um, um, so the order, again, of this book is what makes sense to her. It's her language. It's not my language. Um, it's teaching her to navigate it in her way. Um, it's teaching her to recognize patterns and logos and differences. Um, she really can whiz through this very, very quickly, even though it changes. Like, she changed the order. She was able to adjust to that change so quickly, it blew my mind. I'm still like, uh, let me think, where do I need to find that? Um, I, like, I might have to mark things. Um, um, there's some really good things we've put in here that she's asked for is um, coping skills. So we've been working on being assertive and how to handle things. Um, there's, there's a visual checklist of like if she goes to work, what does she need to wear, what does she need to do? That visual checklist is in here. Um, we've, I, I told you we were working on emotional intelligence. Um, the 4-H, just for put in the back of your head, um, 4-H also has some really great curriculum that you can use. So just because it's not a part of the field doesn't mean that you can't use it. Um, so feel free to use whatever is best and most supportive for what your goal is. Because the truth is, is not everybody's goal is going to be the same for this. Sarah's daughter's binder is not the same purpose 
as Larissa's, but it doesn't mean that it's not as um, effective. Here's all of the information. Um, and, you, and I think this just kind of goes to show the stages of development of the binder. Um, the Columbia Hose, the Gibson State Police. Um, we, she's, there's an identified officer that she needs to ask for. We go through that with her. Um, the Susquehanna County Library is really important to her. Um, so all of that information is in here. Um, and again, she can just navigate it quickly and easily. Here is her... Um, her paperwork on the Susquehanna County Housing Authority. Um, she's filled out the application already. The application is in here. Um, she has not turned it in yet because she's not ready to be a resident. Um, but when she is ready to be a resident, she will be prepared. Well, good question. Because her mom is not technically identified as a legal guardian, she can do it on the fly if she wants. But if she chooses to do that, I believe that she needs to be educated and to know what the ramifications are going to be of that. Because it will be World War III. And who's going to suffer is Larissa. So what we would like to do as a team is just to continue to work with mom, continue to have times where we're talking about it um, in a very, very gentle way, um, in a very sensitive way, and a what if, have you thought about this? Consider this. And so more of a, again, building on the relationship than like, do what you want, it's your life. So, um, Larissa is just naturally very thoughtful and very sensitive, and she never really wants to hurt her mom. But what we can see in her is she's very, very torn. She loves her family, and she sees that her family is holding her back, but she really wants to have the life of independence. In my mind, it, as a therapeutic value, I think that's a very healthy struggle because the truth is, as we look at ourselves, do we ever grow, grow when life is good? No, we don't grow when life is good. We grow when things suck. We grow when it's terrible. We grow when it's hardship, right? We become stronger through those times. And I've had to say, like, this really is terrible and this really sucks, but you're going to grow through this. And let's see the beauty that comes out of this. And so we have really empowered resiliency in her. And so um, we can tell from the first few seconds of being in the car, what's gonna happen. Um, we can see if she's angry with her family. We can see if she's ready to work. We can see if she needs to vent. Um, it's always a process with her and it, it takes time. You sound like a counselor, what is your background? I am a counselor. <laughs> that is my background, <laughs> yes. My, I do have a master's of counseling. I have an LPC and an NCC, mm -hmm. yes. Um, so from a therapeutic value, um, I really try to be very, very mindful of Larissa's mental health and the stability of her family because it's not worth ripping everybody apart for the sake of one person. Go ahead. I love this idea. I feel like I need one in my life. <laughs> Yes, um, my kids actually just asked me the question you don't ever want to hear from your kids. Like the beginning of the week, I think it was Monday, my kids said, so mom, if you die, what happens? Can you explain to me a will? Can you explain to me like the house, where does the house go? My kids are 16 and 12. And so they're saying to me like these really hard questions that's what a binder is for, right? Like, hey, kids, when, when life gets tough, when life sucks, when I'm in the hospital, when something happens, you go and you get that book. Um, and so I think there's things that are different 
Um, and I think you can use it differently. I was doing a training um, in Bradford County and somebody said, could you use this for juvenile justice? Absolutely. You can use this concept for absolutely anything. Um, and I think the possibilities are absolutely endless. Um, everybody's functioning level is different, but it doesn't mean that it, it can't be successful for them because you just tailor it to make it so that it is successful for them. Yep. Why that? Because she doesn't want to have the binder because she doesn't feel like her mom respects her privacy enough and she feels like her mom would make fun of the things that are in there and she honestly feels like her brothers would destroy it. And she values it too much to allow that to happen. Yeah, so, so the question is, is, um, does, is Larissa a part of the process of changing? Larissa is 100% a part of the process. Nothing goes into this binder or out of this binder without her consent and her permission. So you will see at the beginning of this, um, there's like a pocket folder. And in this pocket folder, there are just loose leaf papers um, that are just things to add, things to consider. Um, Larissa's, Larissa's writing. Um, and so this is 100% Larissa's control. There are times where we might say, like, have you thought about this? What about this? And so when we had that conversation about um, emotional intelligence, did I sit down and say, well, I can see that your emotional intelligence is kind of lacking? No. But what, we, what, what I saw was her heart and her heartache and her pain. And I said, you know what? There's words for this. Let's work through that. And then what do you want to go in your binder? And she chose. And so then I said, you know what? There's curriculum for this. What do you want? And so we have shown her, like, here's a screenshot. Here's a screenshot. You can explore. And so it's by no means is it quick. Um, and it is 100% Larissa. I mean, to the style of the font, it's Larissa. Um, to be honest with you, these tabs, I bought six different tabbing sets. Why? Because I don't know what's going to work for her. We tried one tabbing system, and it wasn't great. And so I bought six different tabbing tests, and I said, now what is going to work for you? This is what I think. Did she choose what I wanted? Like what would work for me? No. And I'm okay with that because I, I don't have to use it other than today or you know when I, I'm looking at stuff, but it's really all about her. Um, it is constantly growing and evolving. Um, there are times where like her library card will go in there, um, her shopping list will go in there. It is getting to the point where it is getting so large that we do have to start making considerations, but I, I'm not sure that Larissa's ready for that conversation yet. And so we'll be mindful of where she's at and when is the appropriate timing to do that. Um, so what I want to do is first um, talk about the results of the binder and then I want to show you the video. So um, what has happened with Larissa because of the use of this binder is one, increased independence. So we have seen this evolution of Larissa where she has blossomed. She has a voice. Um, she, even two years ago, did not have preference to close. She didn't have preference to a store. She didn't have preference to she did have preference to food, a restaurant. She always wants to go to McDonald's. Um, but she didn't know, like, this is my favorite store. I really like these clothes. And so now she's like, oh, I really like Macy's. Perfect, let's go. Um, so she's, she's kind of developed this voice, and she's developed this confidence to say, like when somebody says, well, what about JCPenney? She's like, mm, I said Macy's. So let's go to Macy's. OK, perfect. So. It's really a gift because we're empowering her, encouraging her to just have like normal adult decisions that every adult has the right to have. Like, if you don't want to go to JCPenney's, don't go there. Um, increased opportunity um, because people have just, we live in a very small community. I mean, I'm just saying it is small. You bump into people all of the time. And because of the work 
and it, I wouldn't say it was work because they don't. I don't think that they identify it as work. Um, but because of the progress that Larissa has made, she's had much more social opportunities. She's been able to build relationships. There's like this. Um, it's amazing, and it it almost brings me to tears. Like in McDonald's. We have nothing, like, like I said. There's not like coffee shops for people to go hang out. They hang out at, there's like a group that hangs out at McDonald's in the morning. There's a group that hangs out at lunch. There's a group that, of men, they literally had their shirts made and they say like the old man's club or something. And it's really funny, but they hang out at Burger King. So if Larissa says I wanna to go to McDonald's and the group is there, she has developed this relationship um, with this older gentleman just to the point where she, every time she sees him, she's like, how are you? How was your day? Um, we were there one day and he wasn't there. She was concerned for him. She's like, he's supposed to be here. He's here every day. And so it's just built in her these really genuine community relationships where truthfully, there's not a lot of community where we are. Um, and it's genuine. It's very thoughtful. Um, so she has increased opportunity. Um, it's given her increased direction. Um, I don't know that she would have said that she had direction in the past. I don't think she would have understood that concept. Um, but it really gives her a purpose. It gives the sessions with um, staff. It gives very, very clear direction to those sessions. It gives clear purpose. Um, she can identify her preferences. And quite frankly, the fancy word is she has intrinsic motivation. She is mo motivated to step out of her comfort zone and to, to take new steps and to take new things um, far beyond what she was ever able to do and mo more importantly it gives her a voice um, as we're looking at this video she wanted to do this video she wanted to be a part of it um, the pride on her face as we're doing this and I'm telling you if you haven't ever done videoing in an, and um, something in this format for her, it would be like a logistical nightmare because I didn't know prior to doing this, you actually have to have a, re, a, a consent for release from like the video companies from like, it's like very multifaceted. Um, and she loved it. It was like ownership for her. It was exciting because what she sees is like, this is my life. And then um, to hear random community members that she has just built relationships with, um, over time has just been incredible. So um, what we'll do is I'll play the video. Um, and again, I just want to reiterate, she makes it look easy. She's been doing it for a while. And then I'll open it up for questions afterwards. Let me just try again. Can you hear? So let me just start over because it's really. This is my choice in my life. Do you know why it's not showing her whole screen? No. It's not showing the whole video up oh, here? Yes. Um, Sorry. While we're waiting, have you done this for anybody else? Um, I have started the process with another individual. Um, he is. Sorry, I'm going to let her do all I talk. Um, we've started it with another individual. Um, it's a little bit of a different order. Um, it's interesting because, again, um, everybody knows everybody's business. And the librarian that you will see in this video pulled me aside and said, I need to talk to you about something. I know what you're doing um, with this other individual she doesn't really know she just says like I see what the parents are doing and it's not best for him 
can I please be a part of the team so I can be supportive of this family? And they're like, yeah, absolutely. Um, and so it's been a different process for him. Um, we've started with different things. He's, um, we talked about our relationships and goals. And um, he wanted to start with independent living. So he said, can I move out next month? And we're like, well, you need to finish your senior year. Um, and we were talking about like, like, who do you want to build a relationship with? Like, what community supports do you need? And he said, um, Charlene. And I said, are you talking about the property manager of that building you want to move into? And he says, yep. And I was like, OK. So we know where we want to start. So, um, so we are doing it with other people, yes. We're not at this point. Thank you. Sorry about that. Any other questions while we're waiting? This is where Troy's in. How long what? How long have you guys been with Larissa? Well, um, Larissa started in BHRS at the age of three. I did not work with her. Um, she is diagnosed on the spectrum, um, as well as with an intellectual disability. So through maybe junior high, and then she transitioned to another agency because um, the care manager asked them to. They were not thrilled with the progress with the other agency, so they came back, and then she transitioned um, from BHRS to adult waiver. So quite a while. Thank you so much. We'll try again. This is my choice in my life. Perfect, thank you. and I've had the pleasure of working with Larissa for the past five years. It has been a pure joy to watch her um, grow from a young girl graduating from high school, unsure of her future and her hopes and dreams, or really just knowing much about herself, to growing into a young woman who um, has identified some goals, her wants, her needs, areas that she needs to um, grow and improve upon, and just to enjoy her everyday life. We've been working on Larissa's Lifeline Binder for approximately a year. The binder has allowed us to focus on her life, her uniqueness, her wants, her needs, and her goals. Through the experiences that we've done using her Lifeline Binder, she has had so much exposure in the community that's been able to encourage her to have the freedom to choose what it is that she wants in her life and the relationships that she wants with others and things, quite honestly, that she doesn't want to do. The binder is not just a book of papers. They're like living documents. For example, if we practice money skills, you know, we practice writing checks just on paper copies that we've created, but then we go out into the community, we go to the bank and we write checks. You practice using deposit slips, then we go to the bank and she actually makes a deposit. writing applications so then she's prepared for when she's ready to fill out applications. The list of names and addresses for friends and family, it's not just a, a paper list in her binder. We go out into the community and make sure that we're maintaining those relationships and we're building relationships with community members, same age peers, 
and not only that, just reinforcing social skills in general and mindfulness and just areas that help her just enjoy her everyday life. She loves to be around people. So it, it's not just a piece of paper and a binder. It's a, a way of life that is shaping her life. Some of the places that used to find her is McDonald's, Burger King, the library, the bank, the shopping, the pharmacy, and the doctor's office. Hi, I'm Angie Hall, and I'm the library director here at the Halstead Great Bend Branch Library. And um, I work with Larissa. Um, I think I've known her for about two years now. And she, when she first came in, she was very shy and kind of hid behind her um, worker, um, Emily. And I've seen her progress over the last two years. Uh, they've come in and they've sat at the back table and worked on her, her binder. Um, and then we've progressed to uh, checking out DVDs and things for her to take home and being able for her to be independent and do those things at home. Uh, she also comes in and uses the computers, so she signs in, she uh, set up an, her own email account. I know she's been doing some job searching on the internet as well. Uh, so I think the library is a great place for Larissa to come to feel independent and feel safe and comfortable um, to, to come here. So we've seen big changes. Uh, she no longer hides behind Emily when she comes in. Uh, we get a smile. We kind of talk about her life sometimes when she's here. So um, we love seeing her and uh, glad she's a part of our community. Biden is getting bigger and growing. Body gets bigger when my bump gets bigger. It also has taught her accountability. She understands areas where she does struggle, and we have reinforced that that's okay. We just continue to grow and continue to practice. So, for example, then that generalizes to when she's with her family, she will continue to practice those skills, and her family supports her in doing so. I think overall, what has been extra special about using her binder is that we do see Larissa continue to grow and just being confident. We saw her more shy and timid and kind of afraid of her world, but now we see her stability is increasing. She knows that she has supports in her community. She knows where she can go if she wants to talk, if she has a need or she just wants to go and laugh and have fun. And I think just overall, it gives her a sense of safety just knowing that she understands her life and that she's continuing to grow and that we'll be there to support her. She didn't even want to come up and get her own stuff. She wouldn't talk to anybody. And now years later, she's done amazing work. She comes up, she gets her own stuff. She talks to people. She's very sociable now. I think this program is a very good program. While she comes up, she gets her own drink. She orders her own food. She doesn't need any help anymore. She just does tremendous work. It's nice to see that they can do things on their own now. And I just love seeing their smiling faces every time because I see they're just like my own children. They grow with you over the years and to see them accomplish things, you're very proud of that. She actually speaks up now where you can understand what she wants, you know, she just comes right up to the counter. Like I said, she's not that bashful anymore. She likes to have conversations. Yeah, she's very, she's very grown up now. She comes to people that come here every day, the customers that come here every day. 
She loves to talk to those. She's very sociable now. She opens up to people. She has conversations with people. It's very nice to see. My name is Laura Munley. I am the director at Susquehanna County Youth Advocate Program. I've known Larissa for about eight months. And at first when I met Larissa, she was quiet, shy, I would say. Um, but steadily as she started coming here to the office, she's opening up a, a bit more. She's more friendly. And I do have to say, I think a lot of it is due to not only just getting to know me better, but also her confidence. I think her <coughs> confidence is growing with this binder. I think it's giving her some independence and the ability to be in control, be in control of what not only what she's looking up and putting in the binder, but also um, to have some control about where her life is going and what her goals are and how she gets to those goals. And Emily's there for guidance and things like that, but I see Larissa growing in her independence. Every time I see her here in the office, she looks like she has a little bit more confidence, a little bit more independence, and a little more pride um, about where she's going, her lifeline binder, and what she's gonna be doing with it. want to live in uh, my own. It was hard to remember things before the binder. I don't have to remember things now because it's in the binder. It's easy now. All right, let's open it up for questions. Um, you can see that Larissa herself absolutely loves her binder. She loves, um, she can see herself the value and the benefits. Um, and her face is really incredibly expressive and shows a lot. <clears throat> Any questions? Yes, go ahead. That I don't know. What what kind of waiver does she have? Oh, she's in the um, Person Family Direct Service waiver. <laughs> um, <laughs> let me just pass the microphone around. Just, oh. Can you just repeat that? Sorry. Hi. Um, she is in the ODP. Sorry. Uh, don't mean to office of developmental programs person family directed services waiver thank you any other questions sorry excuse me um, so my question is do you see her uh, a year and a half from now meeting her goal of being um, independent and and moving on with her life uh, this binder is powerful, and I, I, I think I can see her. <laughs> um, I do believe that she will be ready to be independently living. I really, truly believe that it's going to be um, her family that is the deciding factor. So I think it's going to be how fast does her family come along and accept that. Um, so could it be a year and a half? It could be. Um, I think it's a, it's about the sensitivity of how that is expressed to Larissa, um, because we don't want to set her for failure, but we also don't want her to feel rejected by not reaching her goals. So is, do I feel like it's realistic? I do. Excuse me. Way back in the beginning of the, presenta the presentation, you said you had used a type of uh, like a sorter or something. Was that Casey's? Oh, the the Casey Life Skills Assessment. Yes. So yes, let me just show you that. <clears throat> so it will systematically, you can do it however you want. I can tell you how I did it. Um, it's on the computer. I actually printed it off. And we did it more as conversations. Um, because very quickly, Larissa learned that if I asked her the question, 
um, what were some of the questions that she would learn? Um, I can turn down a sexual advance. She would say yes. But then if we say, could you please tell me the steps to turning down a sexual advance? She'd be like, I don't know. So we had to make them more conversations because if it was just face value, she knows everything. Um, and not in a negative way, like I don't mean that negatively at all, um, but she just, her, her secu um, security and her skills might be a little bit different than what they actually are. So we did it as a team approach because different people in the team see different things. Um, and so we did it uh, once every six months, eight months, depending on, again, we allowed Larissa to say, like, do you think you'd like to check your progress? Um, but yes, it's the Casey Life Skills Assessment. Yes? As Larissa wants to uh, do more things on her own and possibly move out of an year and a half, two years or whatever, has, I do see that she's going out to do things on her own a little bit, but does she get involved with any community activities, the Center for Independent Living in the county, or anything like that to start interacting with people that are that are dealing with some of the same things like she is so she can also relate to people sure so the beginning part of that question is does larissa do independently get out and um get together with other people yes and no um independently by herself no some of it she doesn't want to um she's very comfortable with the life that she has now she really loves um the relationship she has with angie um, it's really very, it's very true, it's very genuine. Um, she loves that relationship, and so for her, that like feeds her soul. Um, she does, like I think I said this, she wants to go to a church. Um, her mother has not been willing to take her, um, and so that's been an exploration. There has been like a movie, a movie night with people in the community that she wanted to go to independently. Um, and I think that was in the process of like, we've been in the process of like, this is where it is, this is how you walk, what's gonna happen you know, if you're walking independently, where is your cell phone, who are you gonna call? So we've been doing all of those things. So does she do things by herself? She has because she went and got that paper signed by herself. <laughs> um, she has done some other things, um, but she really truthfully does what she wants and we're just looking for more opportunities. Um, so I don't know if that answers your question. There's not a lot available in our area without traveling a great distance and her family is not willing to transport her. So if it costs nine miles to go to the grocery store, I mean $9 to go to the grocery store, um, I believe when she was volunteering at the daycare, um, it was an eight mile ride and it was $27 one way to volunteer. So. Um, just another component of Casey assessment, um, we use it to support youth that are transitioning out of foster care. Mm -hmm. There's a section there or a component to it. If you are providing one-on-one -on -one services with youth, you can also complete that Casey Life Skills Assessment, mm -hmm. and it's a great um, conversational tool mm -hmm. for the youth to complete one and you complete one and just to compare it and have a dialogue between the two of you and mm -hmm. see where you are with it and the needs that you feel the youth have mm -hmm. as opposed to where they think that they are mm -hmm. right that's a good point thank you, mm -hmm. thank you for that yes mm -hmm. okay. it's schools uh, I was just gonna say schools use it a lot um, so um, oftentimes um, school districts that is an assessment that they use In our county? So, in well, what I'm what I'm aware of is um, youth advocate programs. I know in our county, Keystone Community Resources has a um, a day program, <coughs> step by step, has residential homes, and I believe in our area that might be it. 
So when you go out beyond our area, I would have to do some research. I know Tri-Valley Care does some stuff, but not much. I know. Um, but I mean, you go to oh. the past and provide. I can, yeah. Or do the life. But do, do you always go outside the home to work on the life book? Um, yes. I don't sit down and actually do the work with her. Um, but when they do do the work, um, they'll do it in the library, they'll do it in an office, they'll do it um, at McDonald's. Really, they've done it at the park. It's really where Larissa wants to go to work on it. So what agency does that work It's What's Emily, where's Emily oh. from? Oh, youth advocate programs. Through the county is what? No. Through the, through the, through the waiver. waiver. Sorry, okay, right. Through the waiver. Here. I would just say in many counties there are case management services that would be able to provide you with resources in your area that would be able to provide these services. Right. Yeah. Thank you. Oh, there's another one back there too. Oh. oh, sorry. I saw her over there. Have Larissa and her mother ever come to an impasse that you've had to help intervene? Oh, yes. <laughs> How do you do that? Um, gently, with love, understanding. Um, mom's more of like an iron fist kind of a person. And Larissa's more of a cower and hide kind of a person. Um, so I really work on like respectful communication. And ultimately, you just want what is best for Larissa. Re that's my, it's what, yeah. Another question. But again, let me just go back to, it defaults to my relationship. So I have the ability to say things to um, Larissa's mom that probably other people wouldn't say, but I've really worked on that relationship with her. Like I called her on the carpet. So what is your role and how did you get involved and how do we find you? <laughs> <laughs> well, my role with her is a behavior specialist. So I work with her on her behaviors. Um, the behaviors that she would exhibit, she would shut down. Um, she does have some verbal aggression. Um, so that was my role, um, was just working through behaviors. Sure. How would you start the binders so it's not like a chore for them? If you wanted? Sure. Um, I would probably start it with what their interests are, um, keeping in mind your framework and your goals. Um, and so if you need to do like a list just to say like, hey, this is what we ultimately want, but let's start with something that they really enjoy, I would say, like, what are you passionate about? Where do you want to go? What do you want to do? Um, I, I also think like, hey, where do, you want to, where do you see yourself in three years? Where do you, self, you see yourself in a year? Where do you see yourself in five years? Let's get some real, um, because I think sometimes they don't think of that. They just live day to day um, without like, oh, yeah, I really want to do this. Um, and I, I think it's, it's um, had, Larissa's now had the opportunity to have a voice and say, I don't like this, I don't want this. Yeah, mm -hmm. thank you. Any other questions? Just, just yeah, let me just, oh. go ahead, what's your question? I I get it right off their website, so I would have to look myself to find it. Yeah, no, it's free. C A S E Y Life Skills Assessment. So I think it's easy to see Larissa and think that she's very verbal. So could you talk about that and also how she's been advocating in other avenues? Because I feel like that's kind of grown with the binder as well. Sure. So Larissa's also been diagnosed with selective mutism. And um, communication is a challenge for her. Um, Larissa, Larissa um, we actually just talked about this the other day. Um, she has some processing challenges and some, some it takes her a little bit to express what she's thinking and feeling. Um, and it, it really makes her frustrated when people cut her off, don't give her the time. Um, but her talking on that video, um, we talked about the expectations. Um, Larissa has started um, self-advocating. So she does do some trainings where she goes and um, she 
talks to other people about what it's like to um, be an inv individual with autism. Um, she talks about um, some of the struggles. Um, she has worked um, with, we've, we've talked to her about like the expectations of work and this is her cheat sheet for training. So when she's supporting other people and um, talking to them, she, she has her sheets. Um, to be honest with you, she can't read this. Um, she knows keywords and she'll pick up keywords. Um, so she'll see her name, Larissa, and she'll say, my name is Larissa. Um, she'll see 23 and she knows that she needs to say, I'm 23 years old. Um, she, <laughs> I love listening to her speak because you don't ever know what's going to come out and keeps you on your toes. Um, so she'll see seven and she knows that's her cue to say, I have seven nieces and nephews and she'll go through all of their names and then she'll say, my sister is crazy. I don't want to be like her. <laughs> um, because she has seven nieces and nephews, and at one point in time, there were seven nieces and nephews because of a blended family under the age of three. <laughs> and so Larissa clearly remembers that, and I actually believe that that was the, like the starting point for Larissa to want to be independently living, because those seven nieces and nephews were living in that house with her, and she's like, oh, I do not want that. Um, so she, I, I think if you listen to like, Angie and um, Sheila in the video, they both commented in, uh, on how Larissa initially didn't talk. It's taken months and in some cases years for Larissa to feel comfortable to communicate. Um, so it looks like life is great, life is perfect, but she really does have some communication challenges. But again, that's why we have the binder because if she's in a situation where she needs to communicate, she can go right to the binder and she can use her binder to communicate um, and supplement what it is that she's trying to communicate. Um, she has learned um, how to make a phone call and say, I need to make my due dates for my videos later. I can't get there. Will it sound the way that it is when I'm speaking? It won't, but they'll get the message. Um, her communication um, sometimes can be fragmented and cyclical. Um, and so people that don't have a relationship with her really do struggle to understand sometimes what she's saying. Um, but she will go through her reading level is a, about the beginning of a first grade reading level. Um, but it's not a limitation. Um, it's what we work with and it's what we empower her and I love the fact that she's willing to learn and grow and she's able to figure out words as we continue but we don't it's just not an issue it's not a challenge okay, one more question. Um, her work, her worker, is she a TSS she's a DDS what is it she's um, a DDS so a DDS. it's similar she's like a community support and at have aid so it's like she has goals for independent living and functioning so it, think of a TSS, but not behavioral based. It's goals based and skills based. How many, how many hours does she have with Larissa? 16 a week. 16 a week. Okay. Larissa's mom is an excellent, excellent advocate for services. That is the one thing she has always been really good at. Larissa's <coughs> mom will not think even a second about ripping somebody apart in Harrisburg to get what she wants. And if you think she's gonna go to the top of our agency, she will not. She'll actually like roll over us on the bus, back up, back and forth, to get to who she needs to get to in Harrisburg. And she's always done that since Larissa was little. And my last question, can she type or she could type the information and then it could talk back to her, you know, on an iPad or um, phone or something like that? She can, it's a work in progress. It's too cumbersome. She would choose voice first. Okay. Thank you. Yep. Thank, Thank you. you.